Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Jotty's Wager by Jonathan Nevere. This is a sci-fi book from Cantrell Books. It came out in 2021. I received this copy from the author in exchange for a fair review, so thank you very much to Jonathan for that. <laughs> a wonderful follow-up to Goodbye for Goodbye to the Sun, I can't talk, Jotty's Wager amps up the characterization and still manages to give us a thrilling ride. So what is it about? Alo is a streetwise teen surviving alone on the remote and moon base Tarkasi 9. She wants nothing more than to flee into the wider world of the arm. When her chance arrives, she makes it no farther than the first ship out of the system. That's where Jadi, the parent war veteran and general fighting the monopolies, gives her a second chance. It's an unlikely partnership, but Alo's rogue status is just what Jadi's people's army needs to drive the final spike of victory into a weakening Gargisian council. A team of experts assembles and hope rests on Alo's skill, stealth, and tenacity to pull off the impossible. It's a wild gambit and a moral code may need to be bent or broken to achieve success. When an internal shadow rises, casting doubt on their plans, Alo and Jaddy are forced to weigh the cost of revenge against honor and justice. Just like the last book, we have two main characters. Jaddy is just as much a main character as Alo moving up from his status as a minor character in book one. <laughs> Both are wonderfully flushed out with motivations that make sense and evolutions and story arcs that are fulfilling and endear them to you. I loved Alo from the start, you know, who doesn't love a spunky street kid? And the balance the two characters brought to one another was awesome to watch develop. The other characters come in to give it a real found family dynamic that made you wish you were part of their team. <laughs> And of course, I have to mention Jurib, I think that's how you say it, the imaginary friend who gets a bit of a point of view. <laughs> this was such an interesting way to add more dimension to Ilo, and I loved that aspect of it. It was also fun because like, I was wondering until pretty much the end what the deal was, you know, whether they were real or some kind of trauma reaction to something. I That was kind of a really fun element. I also love the normalization of non-binarism, which was included in a way that was, you know, in no way the character's main feature. It was who they were, yes, but it didn't define them. It wasn't like their only characteristic. It's getting a lot better now in fiction, but still I come across books where a queer character's only characteristic is the fact that they're queer, where this is just kind of part of Jotty and it's not a, uh, it's not a deal. And that's how it should be, in my opinion. <laughs> This book is far less bleak and sorrowful than the previous novel, which was a bit dark at times, and it has more wit and fun than kind of doom and gloom. It felt a bit closer to Stellar Instinct at time, which is uh, Jonathan's spy-fi novel, you should check that out, as it features a heist aspect and a kidnapping and a rescuing. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. This also allows us some travel to some really fun worlds and gives the crew a tangible goal that ties into the political mechanics of the universe itself. So a lot, the book is just like very well put together. Everything kind of fits together. It's, it flows really nicely. If you couldn't tell, I liked this one actually a lot better than the first one. I think because it was a bit more fun. Of course, I also don't need to talk about Jonathan's lyrical and contemplative, almost philosophical approach to prose, as we mentioned it before. <laughs> he does get a bit lofty at times, I will say, but I find this is a nice break from the sci-fi I read, which tends to kind of avoid that sort of thing. So it's, if you want something a little bit more kind of contemplative or a bit more kind of thoughtful, um, you should check out this book. Um, you can read this book as a standalone kind of, because it's kind of like a prequel to the first one. So if you're if you think the first one seems a bit too, kind of serious um, or maybe you're not as interested, definitely check this one out because it's like kind of totally different. <laughs> the world building, as I mentioned, is well done. It's not expansive so that you're overwhelmed, but it also suits the story and the plot. There's a great balance here and it has some fun and unique aspects that I really enjoyed. I also really liked how this one dealt with the Trojan War, you know, or the other one dealt with Antigone. You know, what will the third one be, I wonder? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm going to be reading that one in October. It's, uh, it's on my shelf. That one's called um, No Song But Silence. So, yeah, it'll be exciting to see kind of how this trilogy wraps up. And again, thank you so much to Jonathan for my copy. I love it. it it's kind of big, but it's, it doesn't feel big. It's, um, it's, it's really fun. So if you get a chance to check it out, you totally should. And yeah, thanks. <laughs>